Okay, turtle graphics with Python. So we're going to use turtles to draw pictures. File in, file in. There you go. A couple seats right there. Don't go in the back row. Uh, is this it, or is anyone else coming? Two more. Big class. Okay, so we've only got 30 minutes together, so I'm going to fly through these slides. But please pay attention, because there's a... Uh, otherwise, when you get to the part where you get to do the fun stuff, you won't know what to do. So, turtle graphics in Python. Turtle graphics. What does a turtle have to do with graphics? Okay, so way back in the 60s, that's right, the 1960s, okay, there was a programming language invented called Logo. The idea of Logo is uh, it, was, it was a teaching language. It wasn't meant to do anything useful, like you wouldn't use it to program just by example, that computer Watson that won Jeopardy or, or things like that. You would use it strictly for drawing pictures, uh, but it teaches you how to program. The word logo comes from logos, which means thought in Greek. Okay, so the, what happened was there's this little robot with a pen, and the language made the robot move around and draw pictures with the pen. And it was meant to teach kids the concepts of programming, and hopefully they would do this and say, wow, that's a lot of fun. And the robot is the turtle. So that's what it had to do with uh, turtles. Actually, here's a picture of it. So you might be looking at this little robot with a pen and thinking, OK, whoop de doo they have self-driving cars. Like, why is a robot with a pen in any way impressive? Well, have you ever made a robot with a pen? No, I don't think so. So yeah, obviously, compared to the height of technology, this is not that impressive. But remember, this is an introduction. You haven't done this yet, so it's all brand new. And uh, it's pretty exciting. And you build on this. You step and step and step. And the next thing you know, you know you're know, you designing, I don't know, drones or spacecraft or uh, rescue vehicles that are unmanned and things like that. It could be any number of, of things that you can apply this to. And uh, OK, so when I was a little younger than you and I was first exposed to Logo, it was on an Apple II computer. And this is what it looked like. So this was the height of graphics right now, this little triangle with the lines. Anyhow, Python. What does Python have to do with coding? Anyway, a Python, of course, is a snake, but that's not where it gets its name from. The guy who invented Python was a fan of Monty Python, and that's why he called it Python, because he thought it was funny, although you frequently see a snake advertised. Python is great, OK? Many of you, if not all of you, have seen Python. And it's a very good language, because it is easy to read, easy to learn, and easy to use. It's powerful and useful. It's a real language. It's not like just an instructional language. But it's easy to get started with, so, so uh, it's very popular. And that's the guy. That's the guy who invented it. Let's just call him by his real name. Anyway, uh, he's supposed to be a great guy, but he made a great language. OK, so here's what we're going to do. I'll just give you a quick mini demo here. We could load it up. Let me just click Stop. OK, so you may be familiar with Repl.it. This is a slightly different version of Repl.it made for classrooms. And you can see on the right are the instructions. And up here on the upper left are the code. And then down here is where it's going to execute. So this is kind of a little complicated 15 lines of code using Python turtle graphics. And you can see the effect of it makes this kind of cool spiral with different colors and so forth. You know, not the most complex thing in the world, but if you think these 15 lines of code are responsible for that. It's kind of pretty. Just to show you where we're going. Okay, I'm going to show you the top of the mountain, and now we'll climb up the mountain. Back to the lesson. Okie dokie. Code. The word code has gotten very popular in the past few years. It's kind of a buzzword. It really just means instructions. Years ago, everybody called it computer programming. I mean, code was code. But when people say, people didn't say like, oh, I code, you code, we're coders, let's learn about code. They said, let's learn programming. So it's really just computer programming. But you can say, I code, I'm a coder, we code. And that's you know the fun way to say it. Uh, really, you just need to know three things. Obviously, there's more to it than three things. But the three most basic elements of coding, sequence. Iteration and selection. Those three things, if you can master those concepts, those are the elements, okay? Those are the building blocks of code. So let's talk about sequence. I told you I'm flying through these slides so we can get to the part where you practice, and that's the fun part. So sequence has to do with the order of the instructions. 
So over here on the left, you see the instructions. Pretty simple to follow. You can figure out forward 50. Okay, you don't need a PhD to guess what that does. What does it do to the turtle? Moves it forward 50 pixels. Okay, right 90. Here we go. Brain surgeons only, yeah? Turns right 90 what? Not 90 pixels. 90 degrees. So we have four moving forward 50. We have four turning right 90. Let's watch the video and see what happens. Okay, a square, makes a square, follows these. It draws a line, turns right, draws a line, turns right, draws a line, turns right, draws a line, turns right. Once again, because it happened so quickly, draws a line, turns right, draws a line, turns right, draws a line, turns right. Done, right? Pretty simple stuff. The concept of sequence is I can put those exact same lines of code in a different order, and you're going to get a different result. So the order is essential. So same four lines of code saying go forward, same four lines of code that say turn right in a different order will make the turtle do something very different. He draws four lines end to end and then goes around in a circle. Want to see it again? So order, sequence, is essential to programming. And while we're talking about the commands, so of course you've had exposure to uh, Python commands before, now these first two commands, you just you don't need to know how they work or why they work quite yet. You just need to put them at the top of every turtle program. That basically creates the turtle object. However, individually, the command is to move forward and the distance is 50. Put the number in the parentheses and that's it. It's that easy. Okay. Iteration. Looping. Okay? Looping. One of the greatest reasons we use computers and robots for anything is because they'll do the same thing over and over again. They'll never make a mistake. They're never going to get tired, okay, or, you know, uh, ask for a raise or, you know, a uh, longer lunch break or something like that because it's a computer. It just does it. It does it exactly how you tell it to do it every time. We call that iteration. So, iteration. In this block of code, you see eight instructions. In these eight instructions, we see repetition. Same thing four times. When we create a loop, you only need to tell it what to do once, but you put it in a loop so it will repeat it four times. So let's look at that exact code. So instead of having 10 lines of code, we have five lines of code. And the result is identical. How do you make a loop? It's simple. Inside of the range parentheses, you say how many times you want it to happen. You got to have a colon. And then the next line must be indented. That indent tells the computer what actions you want to repeat. Last thing is selection. Selection is the concept of making decisions. The idea is this. If this, then that. If a certain condition is met, I do something different. So here's an example you're going to see. I'm going to start it and then immediately pause it. If it ever loads. Okay, here we go. So in this example, you see if I, okay, we have, first off, we have a for loop, and it's going to repeat how many times? 150 times. Inside of that loop, when I is greater than 100, we're going to have red spiral. Yeah, I'm going to give you a hint. It makes spirals. When it's greater than 49, so when it's 50 to 100, <coughs> we're going to have a blue spiral. And then when it's uh, 0 through 49, we're going to have a green spiral. So I don't tell it when to change colors. It knows when to change colors based on the condition. And the condition is the number of times it goes around. Furthermore, how many lines am I drawing in this picture? You can count them or you can figure. 
Well, no, I mean, every, each segment. I mean, how many line segments? How many? A lot more than four. 150. I'm making 150 line segments in this picture. Yet, the forward command only happens one, two, three times. So I'm making use of looping or iteration. I'm making use of conditionals, okay, or selection. And I'm making use of sequence, all in one piece of code. And basically, this is everything I just said. Okay, here are some useful commands. I am not going to spend a lot of time on this slide. I'll leave it up here later. But this is just uh, different things you can do with the turtle. And there's a web page that lists them all. If you search for turtle graphics in Python, you get a big list of all the different commands the turtle can do. Like I said, we're not going to dwell on that. And uh, let's take a look. So I already showed you, but I'll show you again. Now, don't log in yet because there's going to be a special instruction I'm going to give you. So wait one more moment. Okay, so once again, here's how it's going to work. On the right-hand side of the screen, you're going to see the instructions for each exercise. Up here on the left top is where you're going to plug in your code. And on the left bottom is where you're going to see the output from your code. What I'd like you to do is visit the following URL right here. GOO.GL, this is case sensitive, big Q, little K, big F, little W, number two, big C. And that is going to enroll you in the classroom. When you get into the classroom, you will see a list of assignments. Start by clicking each assignment and following the instructions that it has within it. So once again, instructions over here, and then click Submit when you're ready, and move on to the next one. Any questions about what I'm asking you to do? Yeah? Uh, the, URL. the URL, I'll go back to that. I'll put it back on screen. Uh, there it is. Yeah. Keyboard's messed up.